Hey guys, this is Production Music Live. I'm Francois and today we are going to have a look at this little project file here. It's a result of a request by some of our followers. Like they were asking for some sort of remake of that drop from the Chainsmokers Don't Let Me Down Elanium remix. And I tried to remake the style, not the exact chords or melodies, but the style. And I also try to lay out like this bit more pop music kind of part, which is playing here in the main part. And this is like this future bass sort of drop part back here and here as well. And also I try to like replicate guitar sounds and guitar bass, but I, I try to focus on this beat part here. So we have um, a chords group playing those heavy chords. We have a bass group playing two um, different bass sounds. One is a uh, like heavy pounding bass and the other one is more like this uh, subby bass. And on top of that, I have this top lead. Um, let's play it solo. Yeah, let's play the bass solo. Let's play the subby bass. Make sure to use headphones or sub speakers to follow along here. Some, some parts are very low down. Like this one chord sounds like this. And the other one. It's just a wider version of it for the stereo image. And like this little vocal bit, he is trying to emulate the actual singing vocal from the original track, which we don't have. So I try to come up with some vocal sample just quickly here. And a bit of a glider here. And, and also combined with another vocal sample. And you see sometimes I'm using this track delay function. So if you click this D here, you're getting this track delay function. And you see I'm heavily using it in a project like this one because some uh, some elements come early and some are quite late. So for example, this vocal sample here was pushed to come a bit earlier, minus 58 milliseconds. And other parts like those overtones were used to um, come a bit later. And also in the drums part, I'm doing that a lot. So this is also the reason why I don't like working that much with drum racks, because you can simply move around your your different tracks, like claps or snares and stuff like that with those track delays without having to move around the MIDI notes. So if we take a look at just the beat part, So this is a custom a kick sample here um, and you see I'm applying sustain on it. I'm pushing all the compressors really hard here in this drop. It's just like the right style of music to, to do that. You just try to uh, like push them out there very heavily, at least in the beat part. You don't do that that much in this like nice main guitars part here, for example. This is fairly dynamic still, but in the speed part, we are really pushing it out. So um, let me go on showing um, the basic beat here. So we have this kick. And you can also see I'm rolling off some high end and I'm skipping those two elements here and I'm putting in the drums kick compressor from like Ableton, I'm, I'm, I'm only using Ableton effects here. Nothing, no third party. I'm, I'm the only third party plugin I'm using is Massive uh, for those chord sounds and everything else is Ableton standard. So um, Ableton Live 9 standard, even 9.2. So if you go to audio effects and you go to your compressor, you have a couple of those presets for your compressor. And I just use this drums kick compressor here, for example, and threw it on there. 
And you also see I'm using a utility behind that and I'm putting the width of the uh, utility really down to 1%, like almost nothing. It's, 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 it's going completely mono that way. And why did I do that? Because the kick was very stereo before. Listen in. I wasn't really looking for that, so I cut off all those stereo info. I focused on the mono part. So um, combined with the tom sound, very basic tom here. Um, let's put that in there. Nothing fancy. Um, going on with a symbol. Like the most important element in this beat part is the snare. For a future bass, the snare is very important. It has to be powerful. It has to have some kind of unique sound. And it also should have a tone inside, some kind of like identifiable note. So I, I layered this snare together from different snare sounds. And you see, I'm taking off resonant parts here. If I take this EQ down. So we have those nasty resonances around 2K. And I'm getting rid of those a little bit. And then I'm focusing on the tail of the sound with this compressor. Off. We're just putting it, pushing it a bit more together. And then we are rolling off the low end, putting, adding a bit of chorus to widen the sound. And even more snare compression here. Slightly, not all the way up. Uh, it's, uh, it's dry, 52%, uh, dry wet. And well, yeah, and we have this, uh, this reverse clap, uh, in front of the first snare. This little nasty sound here. It's just a reversed clap sample, as you can see here. And, um, oh yeah, I've taken off some of those nasty redux, redux bits. So. Um, let's put this together with the snare and all the other elements. Yeah, and that's, um, that's what we're doing here. Uh, if I go to the drums group, you can see I also put the snare compressor onto the entire group and also put in a glue compressor. You see the glue compressor is really catching the kick. It's more dynamic if I put it off. Sometimes um, I'm even doing that when I'm too lazy to adjust like the levels <laughs> completely and then you just throw in this glue compressor and it's already better. Doesn't work always. Okay, if we go down, let's combine those drums with, with the bass sound. Go into the bass group to the first bass sound and activate this one. And this is now uh, one of our massive sounds. It's actually from the Future Bass Massive Preset Pack, Volume 8. Here you can see it's the first massive Future Bass Pack um, I made a while back. And like the most important thing is we have a couple of, we have sine wave for the deeper sounds. And we have a square wave playing and a smooth square wave playing. But like very important thing is that we are using the first envelope and we are putting in the pitch control here and it's pitching down. That's where you get this kick. And this envelope is not visible at the moment because it's controlled with the first macro control here. But this one is all the way up. So what this envelope is doing is look, looking like this. 
and we are moving down from this um, like uh, uh, pitch here. So if we play this completely in solo here, and we play around with this decay, we notice uh, we are activating this pitch effect. So this is slightly in there and you also see we are working. Um, so we generate those sine waves, we generate square waves and smooth square waves and uh, like the sine wave is the loudest element and we're sending that to both filters and both our low pass filters. And like the first one is a bit more close than the second one, but in the end we are using the mix completely to the first filter. So this is actually not doing anything. Let's control, uh, let's check that. If this filter mix is down, of course. So there's no difference. And you see we have a tube behind that. So um, this tube effect, the routing is, well, it's not an insert effect, but this one is an insert effect. So this uh, is behind, like here, after the filters. And the drive is quite up. It's controlled through this macro five and it's quite in there. And also the sign shaper and the bit crusher are activated. Well, the bit crusher actually is totally dry. But if you need more of those elements, you can add them in there as well. So, so this is one of our bass sounds and what it's playing is something like this. And it's side-chained to our side-chain trigger up here. This one, just a kick sample playing this pattern, which is our side-chain for this part. And why does it look like this? Because um, like those side-chained elements of the chords are actually reacting to such a side chain. So um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but let's also see the second bass. Make sure you're on a subsystem, um, like with good sub speakers or headphones. And this is just um, a sine wave. And it also has this pitch envelope control. So this envelope is sent over here and we pitch it up by two octaves or 24 um, semitones and let it fall down. That's how it sounds so kicky. And we are taking off the higher frequencies and now we can combine those two elements here. Let's use the drums along. Kind of groovy already. And then we are like brute compressing this to all together. Uh, where's that thing here in your presets uh, for the audio effects as well. And we are catching a lot of uh, dynamics there already. Okay, um, let's go to this chords group here and you see the group has a glue compressor, a low cut here and I didn't use those erosions in the end and I'm taking off some higher frequencies um, in the end to utilities controlling the, um, the vo level. Let's start with the first one here, with the first chord element. And yeah, we are playing 
This chord structure is quite similar to the one from the Chainsmokers or the Elanim remix. And well, you can stop your screen and copy it if you're interested in that. It's basically added tones, chords. The sounds we are playing are generated by Massive again. And this one is a patch from our, again, from our Future Base Massive preset pack. And you see I'm using the math table. So, and noise. If I take both off, there's nothing. So we have noise. And this math table. And I'm sending that one to, uh, to filter one. And I'm actually not filtering anything here. So right now. Um, so if we go to the voicing, we can see we have two voices. We put up the unisono a little bit. This is way, way too much, but you can add a bit more if you're interested in that. And also important is this pan position here. Moving the sound from the stereo to your, uh, moving the sound from mono to your stereo spectrum. So. So it's a very raw sound. And I'm using the comp two compressors uh, for triggering the sidechain here. It's just um, making sure that it's docking in the way uh, it's docking in the original track, more or less. So, um, and also in the back, I'm just rolling off low end and making sure some of those higher frequencies here are a bit tamed. And the second massive synth is playing the same notes and it's using, it's just like moving the stuff to, to the side of your panorama. And you can see it here. I put this EQ8 in, in mid side mode, made sure it's rolling off some lower stuff in the mid and adding it a little bit to the upper uh, frequencies on the side. Um, and the sound is a little different in this case. It's a, it's a squared saw wave table all the way up towards the saw. A bit of acid combined to it and a little bit of this again of a saw here. Five voices in this case. You just make sure this one stays a bit more behind the other one. And now you see it's really about the groove and uh, where to put your elements and where to leave them out. It's quite interesting to not play any chord in the beginning here, for example. Um, it's just so groovy. And if you play a chord in the beginning, of course it also works, but it's kind of nice to leave it out there. And that's what they're doing here a lot. So um, on top of that, we are just playing those little uh, top leads. It looks a bit long here, but it's just um, a sine wave and a bit of a uh, high metallic um, noise on top of it. And then I'm, I'm not doing that much. I'm just putting on a Brauner tube and, um, and then I'm rolling off some low end, sending it through the chorus effect. Like if we quickly switch off all these little effects here and listen to the raw sound. So, um, all of them broken tube sign here. So we have all the stuff in the back and we just go. So now let's take it a bit more with a bit more chorus. It's moving very far out to the side. So I'm going back to 37 and we have a bit of compression here. 
just taking out the dynamic range between the start and the end, it, it's getting a bit more evened out. And then we are putting this broken tube on top, but just slightly, 5% dry wet. Not sure if it's even needed now. I think I used it somehow differently in the beginning, but let's put in this erosion here in, um, like this is the erosion in the sign 16. And that one adds in a bit of white noise. Uh, can also use it in that way, but um, I wanted to take it off. And that's how you add in some upper harmonics. And then I have my uh, Torah style preset for the reverb. That's actually not part of Ableton, but it's a, a custom uh, reverb I save for my own purposes. I think it creates a, quite a nice a reverby space there. Um, if you like it, just like copy the settings here. And um, then we have sidechain compression. And then we have those two utilities controlling the levels and a final EQ rolling off some of the high end. And then of course we have those two vocal bits here. Um, and I'm just trying to emulate some, some singer. So this is not really an important thing to learn here. If you take them off and sing yourself, it will sound probably a lot better. So if and there's actually still like a lot of room for for voices and stuff like that. So you could go crazy here if you set it up like this. And I just wanted to show you, I think I talked about this in another tutorial already, but if you put your simpler onto loop mode and you make sure you put the faders um, like like this, not too harsh, but somewhere like here, you can trigger uh, short samples over and over again. Yeah, and you see this one here needs to be distorted because I think something like that is happening in the original track as well. So it's it's just a copy of this track but in this case, I use the distortion, um, the Ableton built-in distortion. Oh, that's actually called overdrive here, I think. Uh, so this this guy, uh, yeah. And then you have your distortion, and then you pull it up and throw it in there. Again, this reverb and well, a bit of sidechain compression. Those guys are off and shaping like the region of sound we want to listen to. Not too high with those highly distorted sounds. You don't want to go too high. It's really not necessary. It just needs to cut through and that's it. So this is how I would set up such a drop part for um, for the Chainsmokers Elenium remix of Don't Let Me Down. And well, there are a lot of more subjects to cover in there, but um, maybe in another tutorial. But you basically need three elements here. You need some, some sort of guitar part, and maybe we can show that in the beginning here. <laughs> And in this case, I'm just using a recorded guitar sample. Nothing, nothing fancy, just this clean guitar sample here. And I'm also using it for the bass, for the guitar bass. Of 
course for the bass I'm rolling off those higher frequencies because they are going to be covered by the guitar sounds and all the other, other elements. You can just see I'm using this clean guitar sound here. You can do a lot more in here and it will definitely sound a lot nicer if you use like decent guitar sounds or if you record them yourself or you use also um, like uh, contact sounds for example. Contact has really nice libraries for strings and guitars and also for drums and snares and stuff like that. Yeah but you can also do it with Ableton Standard Elements here or try it out and see how far you can get. And also on the master, um, like always I'm using our PML mastering chain. We set that thing up in, in another tutorial. If you look for mastering chain, uh, production music live channel, you will find that covering this chain here and it just glues everything together in the end. Basically it's, um, it's sort of a, a low cut EQ here and then we follow up with catching peaks um, and then we uh, like clean up with this EQ slightly and then we are going on and controlling the multi-band dynamics. So this is like a multi-band compressor and it basically goes through all like the high frequencies and, and uses applies compression there so adds or removes dynamics does the same thing in the mid frequencies the same thing in the lower frequencies and thereby balancing high frequencies and low frequencies so nothing is too prominent and then we are adding it a bit of punch with this little compressor here and we are also adding sustain with this other compressor here so all the elements get a little bit of a longer lasting feel, sustainy feel. But we are using those in parallel mode, so we are not putting them up all the way to, to wet, which is slightly like, well, not slightly, but 70% adding them in there with the original signal. And then we are having this final touches EQ here, making sure we still have a bit of bass going on, not too much in the high frequencies because we have so many high frequent things already. And in the end, we are putting in a limiter and then we are good to go. So um, this is a short version of how you can make this chain smokers kind of sound uh, from Elenium's perspective. If you want to learn more on how to like write those types of chords here, uh, we have a harmony and chord progressions course covering those subjects, how to name those chords and how to write them. Or if you want to systematically learn how to produce your own future bass track from, from start to finish, I recently finished a course uh, going through all the elements, starting with a blank sheet and um, finishing with a finished and master track goes four to five hours or something and then you're through it's probably very interesting and it's also only using ableton standard and massive just like this little uh, project file here also check the description for massive presets for samples for project files and courses 
If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.